Hey Gen Zers, it's Mackenzie with today's Gen Z with Mackenzie, and today I've been joined by Nadia Okamoto, who is the founder and executive director of Period, period.org, which is an organization she founded at the age of 16. Welcome, Nadia. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So I'm super excited to have you today. So can you tell us a little bit about your organization, Period, and its mission? Yeah, so Period is a global youth-run NGO that fights to end period poverty and period stigma through service, education, and advocacy. So what that means is we distribute products all over the world, but mostly in the U.S. to people in need. We're trying to change the way people think, talk, and learn about periods through education. And we're now working in policy advocacy from the local to the national level, trying to fight for equitable access to menstrual hygiene. And so uh, to do all of this, we mobilize young people. So to date, we've addressed over 900,000 periods through product distribution and registered about 600 chapters in all 50 states and about 30 countries. That is super cool. That is awesome. So how you were 16 when you started this organization, right? And how did you get started? Yeah, so I know that menstruation is not the most like, common thing to be obsessed with, but um, you know, I started this organization when I was 16, um, really inspired by hearing the stories from homeless women of using their uh, using toilet paper and socks and brown paper grocery bags and cardboard to take care of their periods. And I heard these stories through like direct conversations with a lot of homeless women um, that I had at a time when my family was experiencing living without a home of our own. And and so I think it was a time when I was thinking a lot about like privilege as a spectrum and kind of like where we stood on that and activism kind of became a way of how I reconciled where I was on that spectrum. Definitely, because that's a huge issue that a lot of people don't talk about is there's so many women and girls in the world, like out in the U.S. and outside of the U.S. that don't have access to like products to take care of themselves. And it's like a really important part to like stay like on top of your hygiene and stuff. And a lot of people just don't have the access to that. So I think that's really cool. So, like you said, you were talking to a lot of homeless women and her hearing their stories. So how did you get started with that and like what inspired you? So, you know, I think that for me, I didn't really immediately decide I wanted to start a nonprofit. I don't even think I really knew what a nonprofit was. Um, but, you know, I think I got really interested in the idea of period poverty because I had never thought about it before. Um, so I started Googling things, you know, like uh, wanting to know mo more about period poverty globally and everything like that and learned that periods are the number one reason why girls miss school in developing countries, um, but also, you know, a leading cause of absenteeism for girls here in the U.S. And then I learned that uh, in 2014, 40 states in the U.S. had a sales tax on period products, considering them luxury items. And it's about giving people dignity. And I feel like when you don't have access to like basic things that you need for your basic health needs, it really can be degrading. And I think that's something that's really important to think about for other people that don't have access to these products on like a daily basis. Yeah, for sure. And I think like that's a big part of what we try to do is just say that like this is not this is just a natural, normal need. And so what we're asking for is just for it to be treated like that. Exactly. And, you know, it's really inconvenient to be a girl because it's like, why do we have to go through this? And I feel like it shouldn't be as much of a big deal to talk about. And I mean, in the 21st century, um, girls and women still feel like it's like a taboo not to talk about having your period. So yeah. why do you think that still is like that? I mean, I think that there's a lot of things ar revolving around, like, sex and gender that are still mm -hmm. super stigmatized. Yeah. And I would even say, like, a big part of what you'll hear us uh, say is we don't talk about the work we do just in the context of women and girls. We say menstruators and non-menstruators to try to be gender inclusive, right? Acknowledging that also transgender and non-binary people might also experience periods if they were assigned female at birth. Um, so, like, I, and I think, like, because, you know, with the intersection of gender and in period poverty, the inter intersection of, like, socioeconomic status, um, all of these stigmatized things kind of accumulate into one very stigmatized culture around menstruation, um, which has been embedded within society for centuries. Absolutely. And there's still a lot that we can do to continue to make um, education about menstruation like more widespread. And I think that you guys are doing a great job. So starting a nonprofit is kind of a huge deal. How did you get your nonprofit like off the ground at age 16? You know, like, I'm asked this question a lot, and I think, like, my honest answer is that I don't really know. I think we just really followed our gut and asked questions when we felt like we didn't know what we were doing, which was often, you know, like, when we started this organization, we, it was me and a co-founder um, who was, like, a male classmate of mine who didn't even know really what a period was when we started, and we started just by Googling questions, like, what is the nonprofit, and what is the IRS, yeah. and 
board of directors. And I think that we just sort of asked questions and did whatever the simple first step seemed like, right? Yeah. If it was fundraising, it was like, okay, let's go out and talk to all of our friends and their parents about giving two to five dollars, right? And then it was like, okay, learning about pitch competitions, how do we go find all of these online or startup grants? And then it was, okay, put packages together and then distribute them. And then um, now distribute through shelters. And it just kept going and going of like what is the next simple first step and I think yeah. I feel like I meet so many young people around the, the country and the world um every week who tell me that they're really passionate about something and they want to start a nonprofit or a business and they don't know what the right first step is right and I think yeah, just that, starting it naturally and I think that yeah. you just started it very organically and it started to grow on its own which I think yeah. is very great so how many people like could you estimate have you reached um with your nonprofit and like impacted their lives so we've we, so in terms of how much product we've distributed, we've distributed enough to address over nine hundred thousand periods through product distribution, um, and that's through like hundreds of shelters around the country primarily. Um, and then through our work with chapters, we have about six hundred registered chapters at universities and high schools around the U.S. and abroad. And each chapter has like eight to like. 60 to like 300 people in it so we're not totally sure but i think it's one of the things we're really trying to measure now is figuring out exactly how many active activists are within our network that's super cool so what projects are period working on for the future or currently so we're getting ready for actually in one week from today we're hosting the first ever national period day and on that one day on october 19th we're having rallies in all 50 states um so it's something that we're is very nerve-wracking but we're really excited about um, and so that'll be October 19th. You can go to nationalperiodday.com to find out more. And we're actually in preparation for that and building hype towards National Period Day. We're releasing our first celebrity PSA on Tuesday. That's awesome. So what message and what would you tell your past self the day that you got your first period? I would tell my first self, my 13 year old self when I got my first period, I would say just to know that it's totally natural and it's nothing to be ashamed about, right? Like I remember, I think we all have these experiences of getting our period when we're younger and having so much anxiety about, oh, what if I bleed through my clothes or someone can tell or someone can see my pad through my pants, you know? And I wish I could just tell myself like not to feel that shame and sort of nervousness around it. And I think that's what we're really trying to do. And that's what I tried to do with my book. Um, so I just published a book in October. And I think like so much of what I trying to say is like this is just natural and normal and it shouldn't be a source of shame definitely so have you considered working with like tampon and pad companies on campaigns to so we know, do yeah so we actually work with all of the major manufacturers so we don't spend any money on product anymore so you know some of our partners are tampax always seven generation thinks you buy kotex you know, all of the above, like, um, and we also just recently launched our menstrual movement coalition, which is a group of, um, about a hundred, a comp hundred companies that are really behind, um, and pushing forward uh, national period day. That's super cool. So where do you see this company going for you personally in the future? And do you continue, do you want to continue to stay with this or are you planning to like move on to other things in the future? I mean, it's something that'll also be a, like a big part of my heart and like a big passion project of mine. Um, I think I'm really excited because it's not just me anymore, right? Like it, it was me and a friend and now it's me and full-time staff and an incredible team and like this incredible network of activists. And I'm really excited to keep it growing. I think right now I'm not really sure what that would look like, but I'm really determined to take down the tampon tax in the remaining 35 states in the next three to five years. Yeah, so when you talk about menstruation education and stuff, um, it's also obviously really important to educate the young girls, but do you think it's also equally as important to like educate like single fathers and just like fathers in general to like be more aware of um, like what their daughters are going through and also just like guys in general? I think, yeah, I would say that we, we try not to make it the distinction between like men, women, mm -hmm. people, various people don't, we just say, this is not a women's issue. This is not just a menstruator's issue. This is like a human issue, right? Like this is something that's actively holding people back from achieving gender equality and everything like that. So what we're simply trying to do is just, is just make this a really, really um, unstigmatized topic. That's super cool. So what do you personally do to stay stress-free and mentally healthy while you're working on all these projects? I mean, I'm definitely not stress-free. Like, I think I'm a rather stressed person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody is, but it's yeah, like... But I think at the same time, it's like learning how to channel your stress into exactly. being... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, for me, like, in terms of, like, self-care, it's like, so I'm usually on a plane every day, and I think that for me, it's like learning to sleep wherever I can, yeah. slash, like, working out. Like, I think exercise and physical exercise has become, like, a really core pillar of what I do every day to, like, make sure that I'm staying sane and everything. I love that. Yeah. And especially sleep when we're not, when we're sleep deprived, we just can't function. So I definitely agree. And I think your mission and the nonprofit is awesome. So thank you so much for joining me today. Where can people follow you in your work? 
They can find us at Period Movement or just find me at Nadia Okamoto. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I've been joined by Nadia Okamoto, who is fighting to end period poverty and period stigma. And thank you so much for joining me today.